hey guys welcome back to my channel first of all i want to thank you guys for tuning in and i really get a lot of support these days and i appreciate it all of you that subscribe to my channel like comment i really appreciate you guys so the first thing i want to show you about this vfx and this is not a tutorial but a full breakdown and i'll try and explain this as much as possible so for you guys to really really understand the concept of how i create this vfx shot okay so first thing you have to do when doing vfx is to undistort your footage then redistort it back so reason why you distort and reason why we distort footage in vfx is to because most of 3d you see right there this 3d they always have a straight line they don't have any kind of distortion going on on the edges because in real life footage when you record your footage with your camera depending on the camera you are recording with you always have some kind of distortion bending going on on the crop of the footage and what you have to do is to undistort it so you can get a better straight of the crop footage you are working with because let's say you don't distort your footage and you bring the footage into 3d application track it and you want to create the geometry for it trust me you won't have better track and the most important for me as this shot is is to try and recreate this set as much as i can to recreate some part of the scene you can see that the way where i think i really need to recreate is where this pac-man is really really visible to the camera and very very much important for me because i want to try and recreate this set as much as i can so i can have a nice ambient occlusion and a nice shadow cast around it okay let me explain more in the beat when i say for this now i really need to block the light that's basically what i do is to block the light that's really why i recreate this geometry okay now let me show you what i mean by blocking light let me show you this scene that i prepared for you guys okay now this is a tool scene you can see let me first of all to explain this for you this is normal scene, regular scene. You can see as a lamp and a sphere, icro sphere in the middle. So for this, you can see that I have two lamp here, two point lamp and a plane. So basically, most of I can say most of beta tutorial out there, they just do tracking, put plane on the ground, then track, solve, and just do the composite like this. Because if you really do it like this, you won't have the proper shadow cast and the ambient occlusion so let me just show you the second one this is the second one you can see how the second one is so what happened is this when you see this back here you see that there's shade around it and this is a wall and there's no way you can look through at the back of the wall like it. so like this there's only be a shade you can see the light doesn't cast around it like this one a perfect cast of the light you can't see something like this in real life and this is what you will see in real life it's very very much close to the real life not perfect but very very much close so what i did is to recreate the geometry for this you can see this is the geometry that i recreate for this and you can see one lap is up here and one lap is down here so for this also i recreate geometry you can see how they do the ground because this light does not have any geometry to block it that is why it's casting directly to this you can see on this object okay. again so one doing vfx you don't want to always just render everything in a single scene you can see that what i did here was to separate this layer you can see we have the pac-man and we have the shadow and each layers have different passes you can see this as is different passes and the other also have its own different passes which i enable for it you don't have to enable every passes you have to see here but you have to enable the one that you need that's only the one you have to enable because you don't want to have a lot of gigabytes of data of your render because that might consume a lot of space okay so now i have the different passes you can see that is the shadow pass and the other is the pac-man and for this shadow pass let's talk a bit about the shadow issue you can see when looking at this you can see that this shadow is very very soft and the reason why it's like this because if you look properly to the scene you see that we don't have any like a sun cast or shadow cast in the scene itself so why do we have to do a shadow cast when we don't have a shadow 
So instead of that, what we have to comp is the ambient occlusion. So let me show you this what the ambient occlusion is when you check on the passes right there. So we can see the ambient occlusion in the same. Okay, so this are the reason why you have to recreate your shot because this will give you a proper cast of shadows. When you recreate your shot, it should give you a proper cast of shadows and reflection, light, everything. You should just be very, very much better when doing something like this. You have to recreate your scene in 3D. Very, very important. Okay, so when you do that, you can see that we have accurate track here. We can see and we have a proper cast of, casting of the shadow. So that's why we do this. And for this, I don't use the shadow. I do the ambient occlusion, then denoise it, and then do it with the comp instead of doing this noisy shadow because I can't work with this very, very much noisy shadow. When you look at this occlusion pass, you can see that it is very, very, very grainy. You can see it. And when you look at the occlusion part but the shadow also, it is very, very grainy. And thank God we have something called the noiser and blender. And this is very, very, very powerful. You can see after I, I plug in this denoiser, I have. A very clean ambient occlusion and for this also I have a very clean ambient occlusion and that's this is what I always do for this then I output this and you can see the output render for this I output this so the next thing I want to show you is the light so let's go back to the Pac-Man okay now this is the comp and you can see that you can't see any sort of light in the scene at all it's not present in the same but instead of that what i use is the hdr lighting environment map okay so for this hdr in my case i don't have anything to capture hdr there's a way of capturing hdr with your phone but you won't get the dynamic range you only have the 360 environment and i did that so instead of just doing that alone what i did was you can see let me show you let me just Try. I'll show you this properly so you can understand much better on how to do this. Okay, let me go to the render like so. Alright, so this is the environment I use. I captured this environment on set when I was recording, and because this is not an HDR, so I have to get the real HDRI that is very, very much like that I can use to mimic this set. So this is the environment I use for this. So what I did was to do some really, really rough comp on this and passes. You can see the light pass just to make sure I mix the two together to get my final output. Okay, after mixing the two together, this is the first one. When I show you the first one, this is, it. This is the environment. This is the HDR light and this is my 360 footage. So when you look at this, you can see that the 360 environment shading is very, very is very 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 flat you can see it doesn't have any impact of light in it you can see it doesn't have any shiny or any just too flat you can see that and this is very very much great but it doesn't match or fit the same so i have to do some comp to this let me just show you what i did here very simple just take a light wrap then a glossy to the mix shader a factor for this mix it together and the other one be the camera ray so what we only need is this glossy. This camera is just so visible for the second one in the same. So when I add both together, I mix this, this camera I mix it, but the glossy I add it. So this is what I get end up with. So it mix both together in a let me just say in a perfect way of doing it. Okay, see this is how I do the HDR. I hope you will learn something from this. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you guys, so let's look at this geometry that I created. Okay, you can see that the geometry that I created here is very much accurate in my opinion. I really tried and I really take my time doing this because it really, really take a lot of time to be able to pull out accurate geometry like this because it's not easy, let me say. And there's not like one click of a button and everything is done like this because it's not possible. You have to do the work yourself. So... With that be said, so let's look at the material for this because this is not just ordinary to just to create the, the HD geometry like this. 
but instead assign a material to it. So when you look at this, let me just come in. I'm not able to show you the geometry clearly. All right. So this is the material. What I did was just pick a frame that is very, very much visible to the camera. Let me just check the frame I picked here. You can see this is the frame I picked. Yes, this is the exact frame I picked. So what I did was just to click on this, just edit, press A to select or then U, project from view. So when you do that, you have to go back to the shading. So let me just go to the object word here. You can see that this is projected from the exact view of this so is to pick the exact frame from the sequence you can see this is 247 let me check the exact frame that i pick so this is 250 the when i the exact frame that i make sure i did this is the 250 so you have to do this from the 250 here so depends on your project you are working on so you have to do this and assign this as a texture image texture onto this so you can see let me office you can see what it is then plug it here you have a perfect geometry so what this geometry actually do is to cast a light around your objects because sometimes the HDR does not really really do much because this is a close very very close shot to this because when you look at this this ground when you do this the way I did you will have some light emitting from the ground to your object I don't know maybe you are guessing what I'm talking about so let me show you in depth of what I'm talking about for this the perfect example is to show you the scene that I've created for this so I really created this scene for this tutorial just to explain in depth for you so let's look at this and this is the, like a ground plane you can see this is what is going on in this scene you have a floor which is white no shading no anything and the object on it is also white, so no shading, no anything. So, and we have another one, which is the first one. But this, we have a projection of our environment onto the geometry. You can see that this is a projection of our environment onto the geometry, and it's very, very much accurate. You can see that. So, with this, let's see the render, and let's see what we get from here. So, let me just first of all to show you the, the second one. So when you look at the bottom, just look at the downside of this thing, you can see that we only have this object reflecting on this object, on this icosphere. This plane is reflecting on this icosphere. So let me show you the first one. See that this one also is reflecting like a diffuse reflection. So let me show you the passes here because it has its own pass, which is diffuse indirect light. This geometry that I've created here will reflect onto the geometry that you place on it because they interact with each other on different basis. You can see, so this is exactly why you have to recreate your geometry, then project the texture of a frame you are doing on it so that you can get something like this. So when we just look at this on a normal look, which is the combine you can see that overall look this look much more much more better because we are having the reflection from the ground is casting onto our object and for this the reflection from the ground is not casting anything so in my case this is actually the best way of doing it uh, and if you guys are wondering or not i do the tracking i have already made several like two to three or four blender tracking tutorials even object tracking here on my channel can check that out and walk through it and you see how to do much of the basic tracking but I think there is more depth to tracking that what you really see normally in the days but in this narrow switch I'm going to make a tutorial on tracking on my channel that we speak much more better on how to track not just to track but to recreate geometry in a nice way and simple way and I'm going to do another tracking tutorial for my patron and for that patron i'm going to do a full tracking tutorial tips and trick 
what you don't know about tracking and what you need to know and first thing you need to do before you track and first thing you must put in mind before you track so all this thing i'm going to talk about it and show you guys on my patreon how to do it perfectly and how to recreate geometry also perfectly also because there are a lot of settings in tracking that you guys don't really care about and you should always care about them because everything is very much very much important to have a better track if you really want to support me by patreon i have a patreon that you can support me on and for this project file that you are seeing here i'm going to put the link of this also on my patreon so that you guys can grab it and check it out because most of the things i talked about i might even miss some things that i haven't talked about so you can just go there grab them then look everything for yourself and you will see so thanks for watching and i will see you guys in my next video mm -hmm.